If you own snakes, especially if you have several snakes, chances are someday you'll run into snake mites. Snake mites are an irritating external parasite that affects snakes, of course, and they wedge themselves in between their scales and suck the snake's blood. The good news is that snake mites are easy to treat, but if left untreated, the snake will die from the uh, mites and how bad they can get. Snake mites can also act as a vector and they can transfer diseases from a sick snake to a healthy one. So you wanna treat for snake mites as soon as you see even just one on your snake. So today I'm going to show you how we treat for snake mites preventatively and how we would recommend that you treat for them at home. There are several over-the-counter and home remedies people will use to treat for snake mites, one of which includes giving snakes baths and using Dawn dish soap. The theory is that the bath or the water will drown the snake mite and the Dawn dish soap will help it slide out from the scales. Another remedy people will use is olive oil. This is used without a bath and people will kind of spread some olive oil on the scales of the snake with the same understanding or same thought that the uh, mites won't be able to stick and they'll slide right out. The third technique that people will use include over-the-counter spray um, treatments. Reptile Relief is one of them. There's all sorts of different types of brands. I've actually heard good things about Reptile Relief, but I'm gonna keep on going. Another product that people will use is Prevenamite, and this is not to be used on the snake itself or directly on the snake, but instead it kills snake mites in the enclosure, on the substrate, and on the decor. Uh, so we actually use a very similar product to prevent from mites inside of the enclosure, again, not on the snake itself, but the same thing essentially is rid uh, bed bug and lice spray. It's the same percentage of each same ingredient, and it's about a quarter of the price as Prevenamite itself. But again, we don't use this on the actual snake if we're treating preventatively instead, or if we're treating for a snake that has mites. What we found that works best is diluted ivermectin. Ivermectin is a parasiticide, which means it is a medicine that kills parasites that's usually used in cows and other livestock for farm use most, most of the time, but it works great for snakes. However, it's very concentrated in the bottle it comes in, so you have to make sure you dilute it quite a bit. And there's a couple other things you do with it too in order to use it properly, so that's what we're going to explain to you today. To use ivermectin correctly, what we do is we take a 32 ounce standard spray bottle and add six drops of Dawn dish soap, because this does help the, the mites slide out of the scales, but you can't just use Dawn in our opinion. And along with the Dawn, you add your ivermectin into the spray bottle. Now, how much of this ivermectin you'll need will vary based on the concentration of the ivermectin in the overall solution. This ivermectin from uh, the Dervet brand is actually what we currently use, and this is 0.5% ivermectin inside, and for that ratio, you need eight teaspoons of the solution inside of the spray bottle. However, there's a second company that makes ivermectin. There's probably more too, just two that we're aware of. The second one is from Muriel, and this is twice as concentrated as the Dervet. This one you therefore need only four teaspoons of the solution inside of the spray bottle, because this is a full 1% ivermectin as opposed to just half a percent ivermectin in this bottle. So basically just keep a close eye on the percentage and the concentration of the medicine you're using before you dose it to make sure you're using the right amount. So we're going to put that together now. We first add our six drops of Dawn dish soap. You can kind of, since it comes out in more of a stream, estimate around what six drops would be. It's not an exact science. If you get a little extra in there, it's not gonna kill your snake. Next, we need ivermectin, of course. Now, this product here, in case you don't know where to get it, uh, a lot of like fleet farms and um, tractor, yeah, tractor supplies will have this, but you can get it easy off of Amazon. It's $20 for this bottle that's eight and a half fluid ounces. So it's actually a pretty good price compared to where else you can buy this. And we'll put a link to it in the description below to make it even easier for you. Now this, again, we will need eight teaspoons of because it's a half a percentage solution with ivermectin. So you can either measure out eight teaspoons and add them one at a time into the bottle, or this particular brand from Dervet comes with a little measuring cup thing. Really cool little gadget. Basically, you screw it on and eight teaspoons equates to 38 milliliters. Uh, unfortunately, this only goes up to 30 milliliters, so we're going to divide that in two and do two rounds of 19 mils so that we get 38 total. To use this, you simply turn the cap on top to move the measurer to the desired amount that you want to pour, and then you squeeze the bottle 
which pushes the liquid out and up to that measurer. Now it'll drain back down to the proper amount wherever you set the plunger or the measuring device to, and then you have the perfect amount after it's done draining. Then what you can do is either take this and pour it into the spray bottle, but if you're not quick enough, it'll start pouring what's in the bottle in there as well. So we actually unscrew the measuring device and then pour it directly into the spray bottle itself. Now again, this is only half the amount we need. That was 19 mils. We need 38, so we're gonna do this one more time. Then, the last ingredient you need is actually just to top off the rest with water. Now, knowing how to make this formula is just as important as knowing how to properly use it. Because if you don't use it properly, you can possibly kill your snake. First, you should only use this on snakes that are at least 200 grams. Anything smaller than that, uh, and it, it's just too harsh for their little bodies. So I'll tell you how you can use this for snakes that are little. It's just a little bit different of a technique. Uh, for snakes like this ball python that are well over 200 grams, it should be, if used correctly, perfectly fine for them. And the way you have to use it is to spray it lightly on the snake's body itself, uh, avoid the head, just spread from the neck and back, and then take your hands and lightly massage it into the scales of the snake. You don't want to soak them in this solution, instead you just want a light misting over their bodies and then that light massaging afterwards. Second, you have to treat their enclosure too. Switch their substrate from whatever you're currently using to just paper towels. Then take the mite treatment and lightly spray the paper towels so that they are damp. And you can treat the hides and any fake foliage you have and the size of the enclosure too. However, you do not want to have a water dish in at this point. Take the water out. Finally, you can add your snake back into the enclosure, and on day three after the treatment, you can add the water dish back in the enclosure. And on day seven, we recommend repeating the entire process. So change out those paper towels, clean the enclosure, take out the water, treat the snake, treat the enclosure with fresh paper towels, and put them back in, and then the next three days after, put their water back in. Throughout this entire two week treatment period, you wanna make sure those paper towels stay damp with the ivermectin solution, but you're only going to be treating the snake and massaging the medicine into its scales lightly uh, only two times total. You're going to do it on day one, and then again on day eight. The reason why you do multiple treatments of ivermectin is because as great as it is, it does not kill snake mite eggs. So you treat the snakes initially and it takes care of anything that has currently hatched on their bodies, but then you have to treat them again a week later to kill all of the new mites that have since hatched within those past seven days. If your snake just shed its skin, like within 24 hours, then do not use this treatment as their skin is a little more sensitive at this time and you don't wanna overdo it or push them too far. Just wait till the next day to do the treatment. However, after your two to three uh, consecutive treatments, you should not have any problem whatsoever left behind by those snake mites. They should all be taken care of. It's good to treat not only the snake and its enclosure, but also any other supplies that come into contact or have recently come into contact with the snake just to be safe, and that includes the area surrounding the enclosure too. The drawback to wooden enclosures is that mites will sneak their way into the fibers of the wood and therefore it's a lot harder to treat enclosures that are made of wood than enclosures made of plastic. So for the treatment process, it might not be a bad idea to move your snake into a plastic container so that you can better treat them or just treat them more thoroughly. You'll also want to make sure you treat not only the snake you saw mites on, but also really all of your other snakes, in the, at least in the same room that the uh, infected snake was kept in. Because mites travel, and they travel further than you would expect. That's why it's so important to quarantine snakes before you introduce them into the rest of your collection, because they may be harboring mites or even mite eggs on their body that you then will introduce to everybody else in your collection, and you don't want to have to treat an entire collection of snakes. So if you have a snake that you just recently got and you have other snakes at home, make sure you keep them in a different room entirely than your um, original snakes. And I do recommend treating them preventatively with the mite treatment, even if you don't see any mites on their bodies. Now going back to smaller snakes, since they are more sensitive to this treatment because it's a pretty potent treatment, that's why it works so well, but it can be detrimental to baby snakes we recommend using some of the other methods to treat them instead of this ivermectin. If they're close to the 200 gram mark, then you can treat just the paper towels and keep them damp during the treatment process, but skip treating and massaging the medicine into the snake itself, because I think that's what goes past the line of what they're able to withstand, and it's just, it's just too much. 
So if you want, you can just treat the bedding, or you can try one of the other methods that we mentioned at the beginning of this video. I hope that you never have to encounter snake mites, but if you're dealing with them right now, or if you want to plan for the future because you never know when uh, you're holding someone else's snake that has mites on it and they travel onto your clothes and then onto your snake at home, things just happen sometimes. So if you do run, run across snake mites and you have to treat them, I hope today's video helped you out. Thank you for watching and see you next time.